Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, DxO Software released Pure Raw 4. In today's video, I'm going to give you a first look at Pure Raw 4. Then we're going to compare Pure Raw 4 to Pure Raw 3. Then we're going to talk about the two different ways you could run Pure Raw 4 as a Lightroom plugin. Now, it does work as a standalone application, and as I mentioned, it also works as a Lightroom plugin. In today's video, I'm going to be using it as a Lightroom plugin only because it's easier for me to AB the results from within Lightroom. We're going to start out with this image. This is an image that I commonly use when I'm demonstrating software that removes noise uh, because it was shot at relatively high ISO of 12,800. And if I zoom in, you can see that there is a considerable amount of both luminance and color noise. Now it is an unedited RAW file. If I go over and I just click on reset to make sure you can see no edits were done to it. And if I look at the detail panel, you can see that by default, I have sharpening all the way down and luminance and color noise reduction all the way down. So there's no noise reduction being done by Lightroom to this RAW file. And there's no sharpening done because sharpening sometimes enhances the noise, uh, makes it more difficult to remove. So that hasn't been done. So it is a totally unedited RAW file. I want to send this into DxO Pure Raw 4. And I mentioned there's actually a couple different ways to do that from within Lightroom. If you go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, and we go over and you look at DxO Pure Raw 3, which I still have installed on my computer, which we're going to compare the results from Pure Raw 4 to Pure Raw 3. You'll notice, though, there is only one way to send the image into Pure Raw 3, right there. But if you look below that at Pure Raw 4, you'll see there's two different ways. We could preview and process with DxO Pure Raw 4, or we could just process instantly with Pure Raw 4. Now, in a moment, I'm going to use process instantly with DxO Pure Raw 4. But right now, let's, for this image, preview and process with DxO Pure Raw 4. When I do that, it will take the image and open it up into Pure Raw 4. When it does, you'll notice that on the right-hand side will be all the controls for Pure Raw 4, as you can see, and we have a split screen. So you can take the split screen and slide it back and forth to get a before after. Now you'll notice there's two different denoising and demosaicing uh, options. Let me zoom out here. Uh, on the right, we have Deep Prime. Deep Prime has been along for a long time. I think it was introduced actually in Photo Lab, maybe three or four. And then when they came out with Pure Raw as a separate application, it was one of the original um, denoising models in Pure Raw. So that's older technology. To the right of that, we have another button Deep Prime XD and XD. Deep Prime XD in general only works on raw files. Dprime XD2 only works on raw files, but it only works on certain raw files. So you may find that it will not work with a specific raw file. And I'm going to show you that actually in a little bit. For this Nikon raw file, it does work. So I could use Dprime XD2. Um, so we're going to go with this newer technology and I recommend you do too. So if you do uh, download, let's say a trial version of Pure Raw 4 and you're testing it out, try it if available, uh, try to use the Deep Prime either XD or XD2 option. As I mentioned, it's going to almost always do a better job than the regular Deep Prime. Now, you may find that this advanced section will be rolled closed. So you have to click on this little triangle to open it up. And you'll notice there's two sliders there. These two sliders aren't available in Deep or um, Pure Raw 3. So uh, they're, they're new to Pure Raw 4. So you have the option to adjust the luminance noise reduction. By default, it will be at 40. For this demonstration, and just to show you things at their max, I'm going to max this right out to 100. Then you also have the option to force details. That's just going to create or enhance the details a little more. The problem though, is if you tend to go too high in that, you'll start to bring back some of the noise. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. Now I am going to max this out just for this demonstration. So you could see what it looks like with details maxed out and with luminance noise reduction maxed out. Now we're not seeing it in the preview yet. If you look at the bottom, you could see that the preview has not been updated. 
you have to click this little update link. So you click on that and then it will update the preview. Then you can get a before or after. And let's zoom in to one to one. We have to update the preview. Again, let me come into a better area and zoom into one to one. It stays out. There we go. And then we're going to update by clicking the update. Let it do its thing. And you can see the progress bar at the bottom there. And it's updated. So there is after. And there's before. Just the preview itself looks great. So it did a nice job. Now we have some other options. We have the option to do optical corrections. We could uh, correct for lens softness. By default, it will be on standard. And that's what I recommend you leave it at. I found it works very good on standard. Uh, we could remove vignetting. Uh, remove chromatic aberration and correct lens distortion. And we're going to have the option uh, image crop to original ratio. We have some other options there as well, but that's the option I'm going to go with. I'm going to output it to a DNG. I like to keep the raw format throughout my workflow, so I want to use that option. I'm going to output it to the original folder, so it's in the same folder as the original raw file. And then we have some file renaming options. Then uh, it will put it in a collection. You don't have the option to not put it in a collection. Uh, you either let it use its default your DXO Pure Raw 4 collection, or you could put it inside of a collection of your choosing. I'm going to let it use the default DXO Pure Raw 4 collection, and I'm going to click Process Now. Now, one thing you'll notice uh, when I process the same in image in Pure Raw 3 in a minute, uh, Pure Raw 4 is a lot faster. It's considerably faster than Pure Raw 3. Now, I think this will vary depending on your graphics card you have, but for me, it is considerably faster. Now, it did put us in that collection. That's why you're only seeing the one image down here in the film strip. So I'm going to go back up to the actual folder, and then we'll jump over to the develop module. And we have this image. I'm going to hit the I key on my keyboard. And you can see that this is the um, denoised image. And there is the original Nikon RAW file. Now let's zoom in. I'm going to hold the command key on my Mac to zoom into a good spot right there. So there's the original RAW file. And here is the noise reduced uh, file. You can see it does a great job. No, uh, original RAW file, noise reduced file. As I mentioned, it did a great job. But does it do a better job than DxO Pure RAW 3? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to this original RAW file. And let's send this to DxO Pure Raw 3. Again, we'll go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, then over and down to Process with DxO Pure Raw 3. This is the only option we have. So we're going to click on that. And instead of opening it up into its own viewer, uh, kind of its own application, what it does instead, it will open up a little dialog box with options. And you can see that because this is the older version of DxO Pure Raw, Pure Raw 3, we only have D Prime and D Prime XD, so we do not have the option of using D Prime XD2. We have to use D Prime XD or D Prime. For this image, I'm going to use D Prime XD. We're going to keep the same settings as far as optical corrections are concerned. And by the way, um, the first time you run a DXL Pure Raw 3 or Pure Raw 4 on an image, uh, it will download the optical corrections from uh, DXO's website. Uh, right before it does anything. So it's going to give you the, it's going to come up with a dialog box asking you if you will allow it to download those lens corrections. It only does it the first time for each lens. So if I buy a new lens someday and then I go to remove noise, it's going to download the lens corrections the first time I use it for that lens one time and then it will, won't have to do it again. So I'm going to keep all the same settings as I did for the previous uh, um, operation I did with Pure Raw 4. I'm going to output it to a DNG. Again, same things. Uh, everything's the same. So we're just going to do this and start processing. Now, as I mentioned, this does take a lot longer, at least on my computer, for Pure Raw 3. I think Pure Raw 4 is, at least for my system, twice as fast. I kind of timed it out, and it uh, seemed to be about twice as fast. So that is a good thing, it, particularly if you're uh, using it in bulk. You're sending a lot of different images to it. Now, again, it's going to put us in a collection. There is no option to turn that off. So we'll go back up to our, our, original, um, 
our original uh, folder of images. And you can see that this one is the deep or the um, pure raw three. And here was the pure raw four. As a matter of fact, to make this easier, I'm going to rename this one. In Lightroom, to rename an image, you have to be in the library module, and then you could hit the F2 key, and then you could just rename it. I'm just going to rename it. Uh, oops. I'm just going to name it four. I had four there. I'll just use four. All right, so that's good. Then we'll go over to this develop module so we could get a better look at it. So this is pure raw four. This is the original raw file. There's pure raw three. Let's go to the original raw file, and again, let's zoom in to a good part of the image that we want to see. So there's the original raw file. Here's pure raw three. Here's pure raw four. Pure raw three. Pure raw four. Pure raw four. I hope you could see it in the video. Pure raw four definitely removed more of the noise. Pure raw three. There is just a little bit of noise in there. And pure raw four, it's totally gone. There isn't any noise at all. Now, if I zoom in and we want to look at like feather detail. Here's pure raw four. Here's pure raw three. Pure raw four and pure raw three. They look virtually identical to me. So there's pure raw four, pure raw three, pure raw four, pure raw three. So it does look like it's doing a better job because I use that D prime XD two. I think that is a better technology or at least a more advanced technology than D prime XD. And for this Nikon raw file, it did do a better job. Now, what about a Fuji raw file? Let's go over to this Fuji image. Uh, this again is an unedited raw file. I'll click reset just to make sure. It was shot, um, let me hit I, oops. It was shot with an ISO of 6,400. If I zoom in, you can see that in this bright area here, in this dark area, there's a considerable amount of noise. See on his face, there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of noise back here in the background. So there is quite a bit of noise in this image as well. Now I mentioned at the top that there are a couple different ways you could send an image from Lightroom to DxO Pure Raw 4. I'm going to use this second method, this process instantly method. Let's go up to file, then down to plugin extras. And then this process instantly with DxO Pure Raw 4. And let's try this. When you do this, it's more like Pure Raw 3 in that it doesn't open it up in the viewer. Instead, it brings up a dialog box and it has some settings here. Now, the interesting thing though is you don't have to keep these default settings. You could edit them. Just click the little edit button and you'll get this come out. And it has a lot of the settings, or it has the exact same settings that were in the full version of Pure Raw 4 that we saw a second ago. Now, I do want to use D Prime XD2. When I click on that, though, um, it looks like it's working. But if I hover over there, you can see that a tooltip appears and it says X Trans Raw files are currently not supported by D Prime XD2. D Prime XD will be applied instead. So I can't use XD2 on a Fuji RAW file, at least this Fuji RAW file. I'm not sure if it's like that for all Xtrans sensor files or just specific ones. Again, I encourage you to just download the fully working free trial and give it a try and make sure that it's working the way you expect it to work for your RAW files. Now, uh, for this example, I'm not going to compare it to anything else. I'm just going to keep the uh, default settings for luminance and force details. I'm going to keep these default settings and we'll apply that. Then we could come down here and we could edit the output uh, options. I want to output it to a raw file. So basically this is all the options you have in the other way you could send it to pure raw four, but instead of opening it up into that viewer where you could preview the results here, you can't preview the results. You just come in and do this. Uh, pick your settings and then process now. Now it says one of one images will be processed using D prime raw processing method. Fuji's cameras, raw files are currently not supported by D prime XD2. So I guess not, uh, none of the Fujifilm um, raw files are supported yet. You could click do not show again if you want, but I'll just click okay. And it will do the processing and it's taking a little, you know, 
it's going all right, I guess. I'm not sure how much faster it is than for this file than compared to uh, Pure Raw 3. Now, again, it's going to bring us into this um, into this collection, which I don't care for. I wish it didn't do that. Um, and where is our image? There it is. Okay, got it. All right, let's go over to the develop module and let's zoom in. Uh, let's go to the original raw file and we'll hit the I key a couple times. All right, this is the original raw file. And I mentioned there was a lot of noise over in here. Let's see that's noise. And then we go to this cleaned up file and that looks pretty good. Let's go to his face. Face looks decent. Original raw file. Edited file. And this area over here had a lot of noise as well. You can see there's the original raw file. And here is our pure raw 4 file. So it did a good job. Even though we couldn't use the more advanced um, denoising method, uh, it had to use the older method. But it still worked great. So there's pure raw 4. Hopefully this helps you make an informed decision whether or not to buy it or update from pure raw 3. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.